Our next speaker is Dr. Dilip Sarkar. Dr. Dilip Sarkar is a medical doctor and a surgeon by initial training. And all his degrees are on display on the screen itself. And there are so many. He's currently the chairman of the Center of Integrated uh, Medicine and Yoga Taksha at uh, Yoga Taksha Institute, Hampton, Virginia. He's a retired vascular surgeon turned yoga acharya, a certified yoga therapist, certified Ayurvedic yoga therapist, and Ayurvedic practitioner. He retired as an associate professor of surgery at the Eastern Virginia Medical School, Norfolk, Virginia. And now he teaches yoga therapy, Ayurvedic philosophy, and the Ayurvedic yoga therapy, both nationally and internationally to healthcare providers, with a focus on integrating yogic and Ayurvedic wisdom with the science of Western medicine. Dr. Sarkar started the first category one AC CME approved CME, which is the continuing medical education course in the USA for physicians. And it's called Yoga Therapy for Medical Professionals. He started this in the year 2010. He serves on several local and national healthcare boards as past president of the Board of Directors for the American Heart Association, Virginia. He is the immediate past president of the Board of Directors, International Association of Yoga Therapists. Chairman of the board, Life and Yoga Institute, Life Member, National Ayurvedic Medical Association. He's a fellow of the American College of Surgeons and fellow American Association uh, of the Integrative Medicine, AAIM. On January 12th, 2019, during annual convocation, he was awarded Doctor of Letters degree in yoga by the best yoga university of the world, which is the Swami Vivekananda Yoga Anusandhan Samsthana of Bengaluru, India. His new DVD, Yoga Therapy for Health and Healing, a daily practice, and his book, Yoga Therapy, Ayurveda and Western Medicine, A Healthy Convergence, published in April 2017, has been very well received by the yoga therapy, Ayurveda, and Western healthcare community. The book is being translated in Bengali and will be published in India by Anand Pub Publisher of Kolkata, India, 2019. It is an honor, Dr. Sarkar, to welcome you on board this webinar. And uh, may I request you to kindly deliver your presentation on mind-body integration an American experience. Over to you, sir. Namaskar, Dr. Lal. I hope everybody can hear me. I can hear all of you. It's okay, Dr. Lal. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. You're audible. And uh, now you're... Yes. Yes, yes you're sir. audible. You're audible, sir. Okay. So, first, uh, let me see if I can see myself, then I'm going to share, uh, let's put in a spotlight video, okay. Uh, it's called Technological Challenges We're Learning, okay, pretty good. First again, uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Hari and Hare Krishna. Uh, we've been in touch, we've been in touch for a long time and uh, uh, and he asked me to present on this your uh, mind-body uh, wellness uh, webinar and I've been in this country in America for almost 50 years so I just want to share with all of you what is the state of mind-body wellness 
which is uh, primarily the yoga therapy and yoga therapy wellness. As all of you know, the uh, uh, mind body integration is yoga. And let me see if I can start sharing with some slides with you. And uh, I'll be presenting for about uh, 40, 45 minutes, <clears throat> excuse me. And then uh, we'll take a question and answer. Okay, you can see my slides now. Okay, can you see my slides now? Is it visible? Yes, sir, it's good to go. Yes, sir. Beautiful, thank you. Okay, so let's start the topic. The topic is the mind-body integration for wellness <clears throat> and American experience. And it is for the international webinar series. As I first mentioned to you, the, the word yoga, as you all, if you know, is a, is a union. It's a union of your body, mind, and spirit. And as Dr. Lal said, you know, I carry too many hats, but I will tell you where do we stand in the United States today. So <clears throat> this union of body, mind, and spirit, what is yoga, is a, is a philosophy, which is Yoga Sutra of Patanjali. And uh, it's a 196 sutras, of which 193 are for uh, your controlling the mind. The practice is the eight limbs, Ashtang Yoga, and you have all the eight limbs. And most of you know all the eight limbs, so I'm not going to go over with it. But I have a reason for presenting it. The reason for presenting it is that uh, Hare Krishna was here in the United States twice to receive an honor and award. That we have a association called International Association of Yoga Therapists, where we have started doing research on yoga and start integrating yoga in our modern healthcare system, which is called the integrative medicine. Dr. Lal mentioned about my book. My book is called Yoga Therapy, Ayurveda and Western Medicine. What we started finding it out in United States that initially the yoga was diluted only in asanas, but eventually when it started entering into the mainstream, and I'll show you how it entered the mainstream medicine, that the biggest talk was the keeping yoga in yoga therapy. That means keeping it is in a original form where it came from the scripture from India. And that's the reason I was telling you that the philosophy is still there, 196 sutras, practice of the eight limbs is still there. But what you find out that the effect of a daily practice of yoga which was initially for self-realization. Outcome of yoga was a self-realization, but we developed a lot of health benefits and which essentially became a wellness. And wellness becomes a called art of self-healing. It became art of self-healing and the, the illness which we are treating by our Western medicine integrated with the wellness. So the integrative medicine today is the, your integration of the wisdom of yoga therapy with the science of modern medicine. Now, as you can see how this thing is going to work, and this is the conceptually from obviously American standpoint, but it also applicable for India also. And you will know that when yoga came to United States, the first 
It was brought here by Swami Vivekanand in 1893. He, pers he first presented with the your Parliament of World Religion. Then next person came around in 1920s, a Paramahansa Yoganand. He wrote a book called Autobiography of a Yogi. Then in 60s, multiple yoga gurus came, Swami Satchitanand, Swami Kaivillanand. They have established a very big yoga centers. Uh, Hari was there in uh, one of them called uh, your Kripalu, which was established by the Kaivilladham. I'm uh, sorry, uh, uh, Kripalu Nand. And uh, so the conceptual here is the integration of the body, mind, and spirit is the spirit is the programmer, mind is the software, body is the hardware. So if you take care of the mind, if you take care of the software, hardware will get fixed. As, as simple as it is. So what, what we have, have done here that in the United States, we took the philosophy and practice of yoga as is from the scripture. And then we have tailored it based on patient's clinical condition. What does it mean? adaptation of the yoga. We have the same tool. We have the same tool. We have the same your yoga sutras. We have the same yam, niyam, ashan, pranayam, pratahar, dharan, dhan, samadhi, but we have tailored it slowly. How did you do it? How did you adopt it? That's yoga therapy. So in a transformation, when you see is not to master the postures or the asanas, but use the postures in stages for transformation. What we say, in stages, impossible become possible. This is basically a concept of your neuroplasticity. You keep on doing it, 10, 20, 30, 40 inputs, it will happen. So you don't push it. The way you have seen a practicing of yoga asanas in India, somebody went standing on somebody's body, uh, two people pushing it down to get into your, say, uh, a Baudha Konasana or a Titli Asana. Those are not a yoga therapy. Yoga therapy is your, the practice of yoga where you are. You practice, you meet. If you cannot even sit down, start in a chair, we call it chair yoga. A stage approach that teaches a pain-free asana. Very important concept that if you are in a posture today with the underlying medical condition, so the back pain, hip pain, knee pain, diabetes, hypertension, because we find it out today that yoga therapy is a wonderful tool for your chronic diseases. So if you get into the pain, that means you have created imbalance in the physical body, which does not have any therapeutic meaning. So you have to be a little short of pain, but stay in the posture with the effortless breathing. The effortless breathing is very important. The, the concept of yogic anatomy or physiology is called the five koshas, Annamaya kosha to Pranomaya kosha to Manomaya kosha to Vigganamaya kosha to Anandamaya kosha. Any imbalance you create in the physical body will affect your breath. So as long as your breath is effortless, lung is like a balloon. It has a six liter capacity of which 1.5 liter is a residual volume, but 4.5 liter is your vital capacity. But our tidal volume, the amount of air we breathe in and out is only 500 cc, 0.5 liter. So slowly and slowly, we can increase the amount of air bringing out, amount of air bringing in, because the muscles of respiration are skeletal muscles which can be trained. So in the United States, in yoga therapy, we first teach the patient to breathe out first. When you breathe out, you make a room in the lung, lung is like a balloon, now you can breathe in. So typically it will be, and when I breathe again, 
completely effortless and I'm breathing out also effortless. What is the physiology behind it? Inhalation is sympathetic. Exhalation is parasympathetic when it's done effortlessly. And most of our chronic lifestyle related disorders, which we call NCDs, non-communicable diseases, are primarily due to stress, activation of your sympathetic overdrive and we'll show you slowly and slowly how it affects all of all of us so the practice of yoga therapy which is a relaxation response which is the activation of parasympathetic tone so slowly and slowly when you have an effortless breathing, pain-free asana, to slowly enter into a state of meditation. In the state of meditation, it optimizes body's natural healing power. So essentially what happens, yoga therapy is the art of self-healing. That you have an inherent healing power which you activate with the practice of yoga therapy and it builds the physical and mental resilience. In Western, we all talk about evidence-based medicine. Show me, show me the paper, show me the numbers. I'll show it to you. I'll show it to you how many papers we have in yoga therapy, but primarily it is a practice-based evidence. I teach physicians, I teach physicians in a continuing medical education, how to integrate yoga therapy in Western medicine or in modern medicine. And first of all, a physician will come, I want to use it in my practice. The answer is very simple. Go ahead and start practicing. Once you start practicing, and if you feel the physiological effect within you, you will have a transformation. In fact, the transformation we'll have, which is the introspection, and we'll show it to you a little bit more and more how it does. Once you have that introspection, when you start looking inside, you will be able to use it in your practice. As I said, the yoga therapy, able to hold the asana pose a little longer, asana goes through stages. The first one is called arumbho. Arumbho is the contraction of the muscles. And if you stay in the pose a little longer with the eyes closed with effortless breathing, muscle cannot stay contracted for too long. Muscle slowly and slowly is going to relax. When you start relaxing before it is a fasciculation, it fasciculates. Fasciculation goes down, it's called a sthiti, stability. And then you get a visharjan called profound relaxation. Completely opposite of exercise. In exercise, muscle contracts. Heart rate goes up, blood pressure goes up, respiratory rate goes up, it's a sympathetic response. And this is a purely a parasympathetic response, activation of parasympathetic tone. So now in the United States, if you look at, this is the uh, study done in 2016, almost 36 million people are practicing yoga and your, uh, almost 80 million people like you to practice, $16 billion industry, and the people believe that it relieves stress, is good for flexibility, strength, and performance. We are almost to the level now that we are coming to a call a integrative medicine, which has started in a board certification in 2014. So we're almost ready to write a prescription now that yoga therapy for chronic low back pain, metabolic syndrome, cancer, it is not here yet, but it's coming. So as I said, you know, the yoga therapy is introspection. That means you have to awaken the doctor within you. There is no problem in the world who does not have a solution. There is no cure. There is no disease in the world who does not have a cure. Just awaken the doctor within. When the doctor is within, what you see essentially that the self, which is your soul, self is really introspection, looking inside yourself. You find it out that I am the cause 
and I am the cure for the disease. Why? Primarily, if you look at our Western, Western, the father of modern medicine, the Hippocrates, the Hippocrates said about, look at about 400, you know, 50 years BC. It is more important to know what sort of person has a disease than to know what sort of disease a person has. This is called in Western concept, it's called a, a holistic. Western medicine is called a reductionist. Reductionist means one-to-one. -one. I have a pneumonia, you have a, you know, some investigation, you give me antibiotics. But yoga therapy is like a football match. You, know? you have 10, 12 players all playing together and their function is to have a goal to win. So yoga therapy is not interested about the disease a person has, about the person who has the disease. It's a very, very important concept. So the Department of Integrative Medicine, which integrated yoga therapy with the Western medicine, so about 15 years back, maybe about three out of 125 medical school has it. Today, actually this is the old statistics, today almost 110 out of 140 medical school has it. 65 has the clerkship, 25 training program, list of fellowship. And in 2014, the American board has established for the American Board of Integrative Medicine. Now you can have a board certification like in India, if you see uh, like an internal medicine, it's called a MD. Then you get a specialized, it's called a DM, DM in cardiology, DM in pulmonary. It's almost like a DM here is integrative medicine. One very important total transformation in the American healthcare system is the authority which is look at the integrative medicine. Well, Academic Consortium for Integrative Medicine has mentioned that the definition of integrative medicine, now they give a importance, a relation between practitioner and patient, focuses on the whole person, looking beyond the body in mind to achieve optimal health and healing. This is a, a 360 degree or maybe 180 degree change from Western medicine I was talking about. They're all talking about body, body, and body. Now they're looking at a mind, they're looking at a integration of the body and mind. And this is the book uh, Dr. Lal and uh, Hari was talking about. It's my book, Yoga Therapy, Ayurveda, and Western Medicine, called Healthy Convergence. But what is more important, and this is published from the United States, that I have a picture of Albert Einstein and a Tagore, Rabindranath Tagore. Albert Einstein is a scientist, Tagore is a philosopher, and he says when a philosophy meets a science, that is your yoga therapy. That is the 21st century medicine today. This book is purely for the healthcare provider and primary physicians. It has everything in a standard Western medical world. It is a reference of 25 you know, standard books there is no articles or no books which is not being recognized in the healthcare industry. It are two DVDs about established 20 websites, and I have a journal reference of almost 75 articles which were from established medical journals, primarily who are listed in your PubMed. And I will show you the, all the PubMeds which are coming. This is a book my friend wrote called Yoga as a Medicine, a widely publicized book in, in West, translated in 11 languages, thousands of thousands of books. So Meditation as a Medicine. This is a book called Yoga Therapy and Integrative Medicine, a friend of mine wrote, Dr. Larry Payne. And uh, I was the, the, I did the forwarding of the book, here is me, and also Dean Ornish. We'll talk about Dean Ornish, who has first used the yoga in United States as reversing coronary artery disease. This is the book primarily for our healthcare provider, Principle and Practice of Yoga in Healthcare. And you have the speaker, Sadbir Khalsa. Sadbir Khalsa, Lorenzo Cohen, he's in a call MD Anderson Hospital. Timothy McCall, he wrote the book, Yoga as a Medicine. And Charlie Tellis is world-renowned yoga researcher now with the used to be SVASA, 
Atman and Patanjali Yog Pit. This is how it tells us the book on research, research with perspective on the psychophysiology of yoga. And she just published a new one. It's called the evidence-based perspective on the psychophysiology of yoga and its application. Since a lot of your audience here are from physiology background, you should see that all of them, these are connected with the physiology. It's a, it's a very powerful book. Here is my first DVD, it's called Taksha Yoga Therapy for Health and Healing for Body, Mind and Spirit. And it's totally based on your, for healthcare provider and explaining the physiology, pathology behind yoga therapy. It are three DVDs, in one for the asanas, pranayamas, and one for the mudras, bandhas, kriyas. My new one is called Taksha Yoga Therapy for Health and Healing a Daily Practice. This is also a primarily geared for integrative medicine. The whole explanation is in your, as Western medical concept. The terminology I, I used or we used here, that how to use the philosophy and practice of yoga in Western medical term. I have a YouTube video, a YouTube channel called Dilip Sarkar Yoga. You can go and see, I have a multiple uh, YouTube for different ailments, but all are connected and explained in Western medical terminology. This is my DVD here again. So how did it first integrate it? What happens for the yogis, the yoginis, that when they start doing this uh, relaxation response as a daily practice and parasympathetic activation, slowly and slowly, that neuroplasticity takes over. And when the neuroplasticity takes over, they are able to control their autonomic nervous system, which we people cannot do. Say for our breathing, for a heart rate, when we're sleeping, we're breathing. So that is a function of our brainstem, subconscious. But I can take a deep breath in. This is my function of my cortex of the brain. So this is a connector between your brainstem and the cortex. So he came and he said, listen, you know what? I can stop my heart. So he was being hooked up. Yes, he could stop his heart, but he developed some atrial fibrillation. But in the meantime, he said, I can shut down my blood vessels in my hand. The hand has two arteries, radial and ulnar arteries. We can, you can see, you can shut down. This is in 1969 at the time. So, so then he established that yoga therapy relaxation. Then came the first person who really introduced was Dr. Herbert Benson. He's from Harvard University. He became a follower of Transcendental Meditation, Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. And during meditation, he find it out, there's some physiological changes. So he got all the information. He wrote a book called Relaxation Response, became one of the New York Times bestseller. But when I read the book, what I find out, that everything he wrote about relaxation response is about meditation. But probably at the time, in 1969, he was hesitant to use the word relax uh, meditation. He kept his work and he's still in Harvard called the, called the uh, Benson Henry Institute. Even he wrote down a, a paper on 2013. So the, you know, uh, public library of science, but it's a physiological effect of yoga. It's enhanced gene expression, what the relaxation response does, and uh, so it acts like an antioxidant, it acts in apoptosis. And finally this year, this is very recent, April 9, 2020, and the best medical journal in the world today, which is almost like a Bible, the New England Journal of Medicine. A New England Journal of Medicine, he published called the New Era for Mind-Body Medicine. You can see the New Era of Mind-Body Medicine. This is the ultimate in American experience of yoga therapy. When something is published in the New England Journal of Medicine, it becomes like, as I say, the Bible of the medicine. The research is very important. I'll show you what the research you're doing. And if you had joined the last one, Sadbir Khalsa, Sadbir Khalsa does all the research. When I teach, I teach with Sadbir Khalsa. 
he present the research and I present the your yoga and yoga therapy from the your scripture. And this is your, uh, just I wrote a little paper on understanding what is yoga research means. And, uh, and uh, Hari has uh, you know, submitted and he was awarded in doing our yoga, you know, symposium on yoga research. So if you look at in United States today, the physicians or the healthcare provider, they look at is called your PubMed, the US National Library. But here, you know, actually yoga therapy and they separated the meditation. But remember, meditation is the seventh limb of yoga. So yoga is meditation. Essentially what happens, slowly and slowly, you enter from asana to the pranayama, to the pratyahara, to the dharana, and to the dhan. And at the level of the meditation, you develop the, all the health benefits. So that is called meditation is medication. So if you put yoga therapy, you'll get over 5,000 articles. And these are PubMed approved articles, the journals. These are not really just uh, they throw away journals or very you know, non-scientific journals, very scientific journals. National Institute of Health, which controls the whole our healthcare system, has funding 379 your, your research studies. But if you put a meditation separately, you get over 5,000 articles too, and about 355 studies funded by NIH. So when you look at the, your research paper, this is very important for all of you who are the researcher. We look at the first paper published in a very prestigious journal called a Lancet, 1973, Yoga and, feedback, yoga and Biofeedback Management of Hypertension. So when I looked at more and more, what I find out, even this is Dr. Patel and wrote in Lancet, in the journal Lancet, that is a randomized controlled trial which is the gold standard for Western medicine. And he had it in 1975. And I want to show you a few of the articles. I'm not going to go through it because I want to show you the, the state of yoga therapy where we are. This is a journal called the Journal of American College of Cardiology, very prestigious journal. I mean, their acceptance rate is probably one in 10. If you submit 10 papers, one will be accepted. And they had a pub article published on yoga therapy for atrial fibrillation in 2013. It's not the article, this article is very primitive and there's a lot of flaws in the article, but the way they have accepted it, that is your acceptance in Western, Western medicine. This is a very famous article, Journal of the American Heart Association. There cannot be any better journal than American Heart Association. Meditation and cardiovascular risk in reduction, a scientific statement from the American Heart Association. Multiple authors, and it's a wonderful acceptance of yoga therapy in Western medicine. This has got just recently published, April 7, 2020, again, the Journal of American College of Cardiology. They put a yoga-based cardiac rehabilitation after acute myocardial infarction. Cannot have a better article like this. But what's interesting is this the paper is published from the research from the Center for Chronic Disease in India, London School of Hygiene in United Kingdom, Emory University in USA, University of Nottingham in UK, all in the Institute of Medical Science in Delhi, then uh, Institute of Cardiovascular Research, Imperial College of London, uh, University College in London, I mean, Sri Gangaram Hospital, cannot have any better institution to present a paper and in a journal called Journal of American College of Cardiology. National Cancer Institute gave in a $4.5 million grant for this Lorenzo Cohen. If you remember, he's one of the author for our principle of the yoga with Sadbir Khalsa. And he did not have a protocol. So he got in touch with the SVASA, Swami Vivekananda Yoga Nushandan Sangst in Bangalore. And then they have done all the work and they published 
and are published in a, another very prestigious medical journal, Journal of Clinical Oncology, 2014, randomized control trial, yoga in women with breast cancer undergoing radiotherapy. Because MD Anderson Hospital primarily is a, called radiation oncology. They have another journal, another article published even just a few months before. And this is very interesting. The same journal, Journal of Clinical Oncology, published an article in January, and then they, sorry, and then they published one in March, which is almost unheard of, almost unheard of. This is a very interesting article, but it is a very prestigious journal, Archives of Internal Medicine. More doctors are prescribing yoga in the United States. Here is one, very really one of the best universities, public university in the United States called University of Virginia. University of Virginia got a, a huge funding from one of their uh, alumni, and they started a center for contemplative studies, and they wanted to do some research on yoga therapy. They established a, a program called Foundation in Medical Yoga for Health Professionals, and I was invited as their the advisor for the program, and I have trained all of them who are going to implement the program. They asked me to be in the faculty, but uh, I gently, a nice way to turn it down because I'm busy with other things, but that's okay. I mean, they're always on their side. This is the brand new information from the United States, the world first yoga university outside India, it's offering Master of Science in Yoga, this is in Los Angeles, and this is being approved by state of California, and this is almost four years, four years work of SBASA. It took four years to get the university status in California, and they were starting an on-site Master of Science in Yoga, but because of COVID situation now, they'll be going online, and I will be in the faculty in the university. In the, a brand new university, a medical uh, university in the uh, United States, it's called Oakland University, Beaumont School of Medicine. They have a separate department, School of Yoga Therapy, with a full-time yoga therapist. So now we can understand how far it has come up in the United States. I don't compare with India, but I just want to present to you the American experience. There's a Master of Science in Yoga Therapy. It's called Maryland University of Integrative Health. There is a program, a friend of mine, this is Larry Payne. He starts called the Loyola Marymount University. They have a Master's in Yoga Therapy of which all of their the students rotate in a family practice clinic called the Venice Family Practice Clinic. The first evidence base was published by, as I said, the, uh, your Dean Ornish. Dean Ornish almost in, say, 1995. He showed the reversal of heart disease on yoga base. This is, he has shown even the narrowing of the coronary arteries in angiogram gets better with the yoga based program. This is an area called reversible ischemia, which get perfused after the relaxation response, and it makes it obvious. You get a relaxation response, coronary arteries opens up, get a better perfusion. His program was called the Spectrum Program, and then it is slowly switched back, it's called the Intensive Cardiac Rehabilitation. And very interesting, he says, undo it. It's an 18 weeks program, and this has been now uh, actually reimbursed by most of the health insurances in the United States including Medicare. This is our National Institute of Health, NIH, which is the governing body of controlling health in the United States. That the branch called NCCIH, National Center for Complementary Integrative Health. You can go and look at the website, beautiful website. And this is all the mentions about yoga, how and what is yoga, how does it work, how to fund yoga, whole section. And the director, the, uh, it's a, there are all the physicians, the director all along. The present one is called Helen Langanovin. She's an endocrinologist. She started in 2018. And this division, NCCIH, which used to call NCAM, 
National Center for Complementary and Alternative Medicine, started 1998. Today, almost have 100, over $150 million budget to fund for the research. So even if you guys from India wants to get any funding, go ahead and apply, see. This is our association called International Association of Yoga Therapists. This is with the only people who are providing therapy. It has been started in 1989. It's a 31 years old association. We do a yearly conference called Symposium in Yoga Therapy and Research and another called Symposium in Yoga Research. This is the conference where Hari came. And uh, sorry, yes, this is another conference. And we have our, our journal called International Journal of Yoga Therapy. Our previous speaker, Sadbir Khalsa, he is the editor of it. And we have another one called for a practitioner called Yoga Therapy Today. Uh, okay. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, the you know, United States, the iconic part of the United States is called uh, Smithsonian. Smithsonian in Washington, DC. You know, if you have in, uh, uh, in, in, in uh, Australia, they have a, you know, Sydney Opera House or the Eiffel Tower, and United States and Smithsonian. Smithsonian did a program, Lifestyle Medicine. I was one of the speakers there and uh, and this was done uh, twice, and they're going to do it this year with the online. And I want to show you a few patients, and just to give you some example. Actually, this is myself. I had an open heart surgery about 20 years back with the practice of yoga. I go through a ERD called myocardial perfusion scan, and my whole myocardium is perfused with the relaxation response. This is the man, and Alan Brand. He was uh, a long time back, almost seven years back. It is severe ischemic cardiomyopathy, inoperable coronary artery disease, physical ejection fraction is a function of the heart, only 10, 20%, inoperable. So he was doing in my class, they might have a big class in the temple, like this lady has a, actually Parkinson's disease, and she's sitting, this is the way we treat, putting people, and he started doing this, the Bakasan, and then, started showing him, he said, I want to do a little bit more of physiological changes. And slowly and slowly what happened, he goes back, he started doing some even headstand on his own. And you remember, in a headstand causes a baroreceptor sensitivity. And slowly, I'll, I'll explain to you a few, few minutes, a few more minutes, and I'll show it to you what the baroreceptor sensitivity does with your, with your headstand. So, his even blood chemistry got better. Cholesterol, HDL, all got better with the practice. He's actually medication free. This lady had a multiple sclerosis. She came in a wheelchair. But a practice of yoga therapy, she literally been walking on her own. This man had a, a Parkinson disease. He had a Parkinson disease and with the practice of yoga. In fact, he's on his own. He started doing slowly and slowly in stages as a Headstand, and he said with the headstand, he feel it completely the 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 tremor uh, goes goes away. This man was almost like a cardiac cripple. Look at his cardiac history. 1969 has a surgery, malignant hypertension, another surgery for aneurysm, atrial fibrillation, congestive heart failure, pacemaker. Literally, he was given up by the cardiologist. With this yoga practice, is a functioning, healthy human being. He does a lot of balancing poses, mudras. He's amazing, amazing personality. This is very interesting. This man had a cataract surgery. And after cataract surgery, he says, don't do a headstand. But his doctor was a yoga practitioner. And he said, he's doing a, your headstand for all of his life, this man. He said, go ahead, keep on doing it. Six weeks down the line, he does it, and absolutely no problem. So this is the integration the Western physicians do not understand before, now they can understand. This is one of my friends who is doing a research, he's showing, it's called Udiyani Band. Udiyani Band causes a profound peripheral vasodilatation. And the vasodilatation, the temperature changes, you know, there's a warm and they can even sit down. 
in this cold climate. And he had a, a, a whole team went to Himalayas. He's a professor of medicine in a university where I was associate professor, and they're showing the hemodynamic changes. And he has his uh, Doppler, uh, he has his uh, your uh, uh, echocardiogram, and this is a triangle agnisarkriya. So this is just to give you a little bit idea. This is called a mind-body hygiene in yoga therapy. What happens if you don't brush your teeth for a month, something happens. It's a personalized lifestyle changes. It is different to different person. It is synergistic. You have a, a treatment and you can also continue it. And this is a very interesting slide. Somebody sent it to me. It says a picture of a, your David Michelangelo's. After two years visit to United States, this thing happened yoga therapy transforms to this. How yoga therapy works is called psychoneuroendocrinology. What does it mean? In psycho, that means above our functioning brain, we have a called a limbic system, which is called emotional brain. We have two areas, one is called amygdalia and a hippocampus. Amygdalia responds to your fear, hippocampus to memory. When the limbic system is activated, it sends a signal to our hypothalamus, which is our homeostasis. Hypothalamus sends a signal to autonomic nervous system to increase the parasympathetic tone, shift from sympathetic to parasympathetic, and also sends a signal to pituitary gland to call the uh, pituitary adrenal axis called altered hormonal homeostasis. It also controls epigenetics, genetic expression. Remember, the genetic mutation is not the cause of the disease. The gene has to express. And the yoga therapy controls the expression of the genes. And I'm going to show it to you. It acts like antioxidants. It's amazing how it works. Inhalation is sympathetic. Exhalation is parasympathetic. And it's a, called aerobic glycolysis. When you have a more oxygen, the end product of metabolism, glucose, glucose combines with oxygen, forms carbon dioxide, water, and ATP. ATP is energy. But if you don't have enough oxygen, you get anaerobic glycolysis, it produces lactic acid, pyruvic acid, pain producing substances. So able to do a better, relax, effortless pranayama helps controlling body's function. And in stages, as I said, in stages, impossible become possible. Here I'm in the Sukhasana. Slowly I can, with the neuroplasticity, I can go into Siddhasana or perfect pose. I can Ardha Padmasana, Padmasana. And you can sit down in a Padmasana and a very, this relaxation is preventive medicine. Let me go over with a few more minutes to show you how it, it works before I take all the questions and answers. See, first, yoga therapy acts as a primary prevention. Like I have a genetic predisposition. My father has hypertension, my father has diabetes. But if you do a relaxation response due to genetic suppression, it causes, prevents the onset of genetic diseases. And this is a very famous institute called Cleveland Clinic. So started a program for Lifestyle 180, and it says preventive medicine, how not to end up here. They have a very powerful yoga therapy classes. They have about 10 yoga, yoga therapy classes in Cleveland Clinic, and there is a, they are called chief wellness officer, the first person being appointed. Secondary prevention means you have a genetic predisposition. You did some epigenetics, something in the lifestyle. You have the disease, now you have the treatment. So if you have breast cancer or a heart, have angioplasty, bypass. And then if you continue yoga therapy, because genetic suppression prevents the progression or the reversing of the disease. Rehabilitation is very important. When you do the yoga therapy, you got a better management of the disease, less pharmaceutical support, better quality of life. We have seen diabetic people getting less medication, heart patient getting less medication, and some of the cases we are seeing cure. But this is all from your relaxation response. Because it increases vagal tone, 
it modulates autonomic nervous system. It causes a rapid shift from sympathetic to parasympathetic, increases baroreceptor sensitivity, heart rate variability, and all of your physiological students, you understand what I'm talking about. So here is the heart rate variability, same heart rate, 49, but this is a stiff heart, this is a flexible heart. This happens from your parasympathetic activation. A lot of articles about heart rate variability, activation of baroreceptors. Like if you do a headstand, if you do a headstand, like this person is doing a headstand, but he's measuring his carotid Doppler and measuring his your echocardiogram. So this is my friend, uh, Levitov, and he's doing, he's studying the headstand. What he's finding on the headstand slowly is that, this is another one, it is showing that when you do the Doppler on the carotid artery, and you do a Doppler on the intracranial vessels and the Doppler on the popliteal artery, all are same. That means body has the adaptation. And when you learn it slowly, you keep your head down slowly and slowly, you listen to your breath, your breath is effortless. And you know, if you come to my class, I do a, a class on a Facebook Live on Saturday morning. Uh, American time is 9.30 a.m. So that will be your 7 p.m. I'll show it to you how this. Can you hear me now? Okay. These are the, some of the other uh, so yoga poses and showing the effect. And the genetics, it causes, as I said, the genetic expression. There's a very interesting article about called, you know, the the regulation, regulation of the genes, down regulation and up regulation. Very, very important yogic concept. That is why DNA is not your destiny. Neuroplasticity is the most important and also develops from neurogenesis. And in the United States, let me finish with you, just to show you some nice uh, pictures, that when you see uh, your yoga in a McDonald's, you know, yoga is here to stay. This is, you know, called the, a Smithsonian gallery, they have a yoga, the art of transformation. I was invited a guest speaker, my daughter who is also a yoga uh, teacher. This is the, one, of the, one of the best journal, Scientific America, the science of meditation. Time Magazine, people who lose it, science of yoga, how your mind controls your body, science of meditation, science of happiness. This is your White House. Outside White House, they're doing yoga on your, on your uh, Easter egg hunt. Here it is, yoga pose in, in front of the White House in the United States. What more you can do? And look at this. This is a laptop, flexible laptop. It's called yoga. This is called marketing. Mm -hmm. And let me finish just to show it to you that what is the yoga? We learned all from the babies. When you look at the babies, the babies, this is a normal. They stand in Tadasana. They sit down, Vajrasana, Sukhasana. And what happens, they feel, they feel there is a, a, a relaxation response. They get up into Bhujangasana. It's a photographer that took it, candid camera. They're in a, in a Salavasana. Uh, the Adhimukha Savasana, downward facing, there's a cat pose. Jathar Parivartan Asan, Jathar Parivartan Upavista Kunasan, Paschimuttan Asan, and we try doing everything. You know, in anxiety, we do a balasana. Look at how beautiful they're doing balasana. This is the way they sleep, Supta Baddha Kunasana. He say, if you have insomnia, sleep like this. The boat pose, Nukasana. Let me finish here. This is a, a good presentation. We have about 12 minutes, 12, 13 minutes. I will be able to answer some questions for you. And let me go back, uh, stop sharing now. So we can, uh, we can all talk. Uh, stop sharing. I am on a... Uh, thank you so much, okay. Dr. Sarkar, okay. for elaborating upon... Uh, yeah, for so vividly elaborating upon the integrated medicine 
as recognized in the West. And on yoga therapy, that mitigates the response of stress-induced sympathetic nervous system. By yogas, activating the parasympathetic nervous system and its role in inherent healing for cure as well as prevention of NCDs. And it was a pleasure to learn about the shift towards unconventional therapies by conventional doctors of medicine in the West. And I'm sure our participants have many questions to ask you. So it's over to Dr. Sainath and Dr. Jagadish for the question answer session. Yeah, I see 78. Chat, I'm not going there. I cannot read when I'm presenting. So you look, look at it and ask me the question I'll be answering. Go yes, ahead. Dr. Dilip Sarkar, thank you so much. It was really wonderful to listen to you and also an elaborate knowledge about how yoga's supportive data by scientific research. Uh, there, is, there are a couple of quick questions uh, because, because of the paucity of time. Maybe you have so many questions you can be answering. We can, we will, is it possible if we could send some questions to an email, probably we may be able to answer all of the questions. But right now, there are... Uh, oh, there is one question can I, can from I Dr. Can I, can I, okay, can I interrupt you? I have a few extra minutes. If you guys have a minute, I have a time. So go ahead. Sure, sure. Please go ahead. Okay. If you would like to have. Question. The first question you have. Go. Yes, please. Uh, this is from Dr. Sharvani. She wants to know how to pursue the course of integrative medicine. Uh, your thoughts? Integrative, integrative medicine today in the United States is a super specialty, super specialty or called a subspecialty. In, in, if you're in India, you can consider it as like a DM. Like uh, you have, you finish your medical, medical school, what you call a medical school, then you do first your internship and residency. So you do internship and residency in your internal medicine, which is like a medicine. And then you get your board certification, which is MD in, in, in India which will be equivalent to board certification in internal medicine. After your board certified in internal medicine, you go for a fellowship. Generally, it is one year or two year of fellowship in integrative medicine. Then you take another exam. It is called, excuse me, board certification in internal medicine, which will be equivalent to your DM in India, like a DM in cardiology, DM in uh, pulmonary, DM in nephrology. So this is a we do call a super speciality of medicine. And Thank we have so we have approved we have approved program you have to apply okay. and to go for a fellowship first before you can take that board exam. I appreciate that. This is really good information for the enthusiasts to join the integrative medicine. Uh, there is another question from uh, the name is very short, it seems to be HS. It's, uh, the question is, is there any asana that will help in reducing hyperthyroidism? Hypothyroidism. Yeah, hypo and hyper. So the, first of all, always remember in, uh, in, in yoga, it is a balance. And in yoga, what it is in yoga therapy, we call it a rogir chikitsa, treatment of disease, we call maintenance of health. And maintenance of health is called more of a, your balance of the body, mind, and spirit. So what we do for thyroid, we have, we have this is called a reductionist approach. We call it a reductionist holism. For thyroid is a wonderful treatment is your ujjayi pranayam. Mm, mm, mm. And basic concept of yoga is when you massage the organ, the organ gets better. Then you do your kale, another is called your, uh, your chin lock, Jalandhar Bandha. Jalandhar Bandha is another one, putting a chin here. Then you do call a Brahma Mudra, which are breathing, breathe out, you know, there are four postures, like breathe in and breathe out slowly, putting down, turn your neck, one on the side, one in the back. If you come to my class, come to join me on the Facebook Live. I do it every single day, these practices. And the reason I do the practices is that then you can do other asanas like your the Matsasana, fish pose, then you have your, uh, your Sarvanga asana, Halasana. But what we ask you to do it at the end if you have an underlying condition. You need to prepare your body and mind first. You have to do some called relaxation asana, relaxation of your hand, 
relaxation of your shoulder, relaxation of your neck, before you get into the reductionist approach. If you keep on doing the reductionist approach, yoga is not going to help you. Because the first slide I showed it to you, I'm not interested about the disease you have, I'm interested about the whole person. That is the mind-body integration, and that is the part of what exactly what you're talking about. So I give you the names, what you can do for the thyroid, and both hypo and hyperthyroid brings the balance back with Ujjayi Pranayam, with the, your Jalandhar Bandha, another is called your Murcha Pranayam, and your, your uh, Brahma Mudra, Matsasan, Sarvangasan, Halasan, a lot of other things. But you have to do a daily practice. Okay, what's next? Beautiful question. Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, absolutely. That was really nice to see the practical aspect of what the technique to be applied. Uh, there is one more question uh, from Srinath. Uh, it seems to be she wants to know, Srinath wants to know, is the technique to integrate mind and body? You, you see, see, yeah, the technique to integrate mind and body is the first, if you start with the body, and body has to go through, remember again, with what Yoga Sutra said, sthiram sukham asanam. When you, can get, <coughs> when you can get into the sthiram sukham asanam, then your muscles, skeletal muscles starts to relax. When the skeletal muscle starts to relax, then what happens is the muscles of respiration, which is connects to your upper part of your body, like here, Muscles of respiration. Let me see if I can get into uh, what you get into. Okay, uh, muscles of respiration. When you get in, then uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the breath gets relaxed. When the breath gets, you know, breath is very relaxing. You first breathe out first, then you close your eyes. Have some hand mudras. The mudras are the connector between your body and mind. And breath is also connected between body and mind. Why? The breath normally is your subconscious and conscious. Okay? I am, I am here, I'm sleeping, I'm breathing. That's a function of my brainstem. And that we call connecting the body and mind. So when the body gets into a relaxation response, you slowly and slowly enter into effortless breathing and the breath is a connector between body and mind. So for example, if you're flying a kite, the roller you are holding, that is your body. The kite is your mind, and the thread which connects between your body and mind is your breath. So able to do effortless breathing, effortless pranayama, will connect your body and mind. And the moment your body and mind is connected, you enter into pratahara, pratta ahar. Pratta means reject, ahar means input. You control your five senses. All the input you receive through your five senses is your food, pratta ahar and then slowly and slowly you enter into state of meditation. So answering to you, how to integrate body and mind? Sthiram Sukham Asanam and effortless breathing, connecting your body to your mind. Thank you for asking, good, good question. Okay, Absolutely. what's next? Yes, yes, please. Uh, there is one, uh, there are many questions pouring in, but that one which is uh, probably been asking to know more about the energies. How to convert the negative to positive energy? Your okay. thoughts, sir? The ne yeah, negative to positive energy is actually, I, I just, if you could go to my, oh, very nice question you asked me. I have my YouTube, YouTube channel. The last Saturday I did a program called Yoga Therapy Art and Science. And uh, one of the whole section was how to convert into negative to positive energy. First of all, it is your breath. So when you in a state of calm and quiet breathing, your eyes are closed, your hands are in the dhanu mudra, you are 
breathing out longer than breathing in, like you're breathing out first. So you're slowly and slowly what you can do, you can breathe in, count of two in, count of four out, count of four in, count of eight out. And we're practicing for so long, we can easily do count of 10 in, count of 20 out. Then slowly and slowly we said, we are breathing out our negative emotions and breathing in positive emotions. So in my sort of a semi-unconscious or semi-conscious state, what I'm doing, I'm saying, I'm breathing out all my ripples, called six ripples, six suffering, calm, crowd, lobe, moho, mod, matsharja. I'm breathing out all my five clashes, abhidda, ashmita, rag, biddesh, abhinivesh. I'm inhaling all the positive emotions. I'm inhaling love. I'm inhaling pride. I'm inhaling gratitude. I'm inhaling forgiveness. All the positive I'm inhaling, I'm exhaling out all the negative emotions. Then slowly and slowly what happens, you enter into a state is called a oneness. In a oneness, in a daily practice of yoga, you are in a called non-dualistic mind. Non-dualistic mind is there is no black and white. There is no good or bad. You live in present. The moment you live in present, you totally convert negative energy into positive energy. Example given. So I'm doing a, I, I was in charge of all the conferences. I do a conference. I did a conference. And somebody came and said, oh, did you see what the person did? And you did this thing. Did it? So I'm calm. I said, beautiful. You know, you don't talk to me. Whatever happened, you came and talked to me. And I loved, I loved it that you are talking to me. Literally, the person turned around and left. They didn't continue conversation anymore. So this thing is going to happen. So answering your question, how to convert into a negative to positive energy, is doing the practice of breathing that breathe in positive emotion, breathe out negative emotion. And slowly and slowly your neuroplasticity sets in, it will be, you'll be, it, you don't have to practice. It will be spontaneous in your day-to-day -day activity. Okay, thank you. Anything more? Uh, appreciate it. Uh, would you mind if we could send the questions to an email? Sure. Because there are many questions which are pouring in, and probably they all look for some solutions from uh, experienced oh. and very well um, uh, knowledgeable uh, okay. scientists like you. I can, come, I can come back. I can. I can come back again. Just you know, probably I'm. Easy. I'm home. I'm home, and this is my okay. community service. I love. Okay. I love to teach, primarily the healthcare providers, which I do. Okay. And you can always you can always come and join me on uh, Saturday Saturday morning in a Facebook Live. Now I'm doing all in Facebook Live, and I have so many Zoom meetings, but those are all restricted. So I'll be glad to answer through all the email. Hari Hari Krishna has all my email address, and he can you can yes. share, he can share with you. Sure, sure. Thank you so much, Doctor Dilip Sarkar. Now pleasure to be listening to you. Uh, Thank you so much. Uh, this would be the time for uh, ending the program. And hand one, it over one, to one more, everything. one more thing. And I finish my yes, last, yes, last yes. statement. My last yes. statement is: when you practice yoga, please practice with a smile in your face, and not to practice with some tension within you. Totally in a relaxed smile, and then the message to take home is that karo yog raho nirog. Practice yoga and stay healthy and disease free. Namaskar. Perfect, sir. Thank you so much. Welcome. Thank you, Dr. Sarkar, for reminding us to put uh, uh, back the smiles on our face. And uh, these days, uh, th there is a new concept of yoga that we are. Uh, coming across, which says yoga on the move, 
yoga on the move. So whatever you are doing, treat it as an opportunity for you to be totally engrossed in it. And uh, so I think your session made it very, very easy for us to do that. And thank you so much for being on board. It's finally the time to wind up and it gives me immense pleasure to propose a vote of thanks for this delightful webinar. On behalf of Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports, NIN Department of Sports Sciences, a part of the Extension and Training Division presently, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to our director, Dr. R. Hemalata, for all the support extended by her towards conducting this webinar. My heartfelt thanks and appreciation goes to our academic head, Dr. Bharti Kulkarni, for her initiative to launch the series of webinars. Okay, that child knows, uh, needs to do a little bit more yoga, I guess. So my heartfelt thank you to the administrative head, Dr. M. Maheshwar, also to Dr. G. M. Subarao, Dr. Hari Krishna, Dr. Sainath, and Dr. Jagadish, and the entire staff of Extension and Training Division who contributed towards smooth conduct of this program. A very special thanks goes to today's speakers, Dr. Dilip Sarkar. I, I think I should say that one more time. Thank you so much, sir. And to Dr. Hari Krishna. Thank you, Dr. Hari, for giving their valuable time from their busy schedule and sharing their knowledge and experience with all the participants. My gratitude goes to the staff of the computer division, audiovisual, electrical, AC, administration, maintenance, canteen, and the printing section for their unflinching support for this program. It is a new experience for us to do so much audiovisual uh, teaching and learning, and we were supported entirely. Thank you so much. And finally, my wholehearted gratitude goes to all our participants at, uh, uh, for attending this webinar despite their busy schedule. Yes, a pleasure to have you also on board. And it has been a great pleasure to have you on board asking so many inquisitive questions. Last but not the least, with that cry of the baby, I suddenly remembered our student volunteers Last but not the least, I would like to thank them, all our young volunteers who contributed, and a big thank you to you, all the best, and continue your hard work. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening ahead or a day ahead, whatever is applicable in your country, and do join us again on the 19th. Goodbye for now. Namaste. <laughs>